Hey, what is up YouTube? This is the Merman Master coming at you guys from the Team Time Riders Yugi Tube channel today with another Yu-Gi-Oh! GX character deck profile. Now, this character deck profile, if you haven't been able to tell already, is going to be a sacred beast profile. Special shout outs once again to Masked Hero YGO for the suggestion that I profile this deck, and I really hope you guys enjoy it. Now, before I get into the deck profile, I just want to note that there were uh, more than one character who played these Sacred Beast monsters. In fact, there were three. Not only did Kagemaru play them at the end of Season 1, but Marcel Bonaparte played them in Season 2, and as did Jesse, both of them while under the control of Yubel. Um, Armatile the Chaos Phantasm did not appear until Season 2 as well, and do note that it did have a name change um, prior to that, indicating as such that... Uh, the old version called Armatile the Chaos Phantom has had a name change to refer to it as Armatile the Chaos Phantasm. But now that we've got all of that out of the way, guys, let's get into this profile. Now, one of the things that I will note is that I really, really love all of the new support that came out for this deck, and um, I wanted to run it, but I also wanted to keep this kind of pure to the way that the deck was run in GX. So to start things out, we've got the three Sacred Beasts themselves, one copy of Uriah, Lord of Searing Flames, one copy of Raviel, um, Lord of Phantasms, and finally a copy of Hamon, Lord of Striking Thunder. Now, as sad as this is to say, the Sacred Beasts by themselves are not really that good. For all intents and purposes, you should treat these monsters as if they were vanillas. Any effects or extra bonuses that you get for them is, you know, is great, but, you know, they by no means are going to be the main thing that wins you your duels in this deck. It's fun to have them out on the board, and it's fun to be able to use them for fusion summons and whatnot, but, you know, their effects are not really going to change you the duel. Um, Uriah gains a thousand attack for every uh, continuous trap card in your graveyard, um, and then it also allows you to pop a face down spell or trap your opponent controls and they can't respond. Um, Raviel makes you some tokens anytime your opponent normal summons a monster and then contribute tokens and other monsters you control to gain attack power. And then finally, Hamon uh, is probably the best one in this deck and it basically can run over things and inflict a thousand per thing it runs over and also forces thing anything to attack into it as the only thing they can attack when it's in defense mode. But uh, I only have one of each Sacred Beast and I'll show you why. Uh, just basically, you know, wanted to have them in here because they uh, there were only one of each in the show, so it wouldn't make sense to have a deck that had more than one of each Sacred Beast. So lay these guys out over here. Now, as I said, getting into some of the new support that we've got in this deck, uh, we have one copy of Raviel Lord of Phantasms, Shimmering Scraper. You can basically boost up a Raviel and go for some OTKs, and also has um, easier summoning requirements than your Raviel. It doesn't have to tribute fiends, it can tribute any monsters, which means you get some interesting tokens and stuff out. You can make some good plays with that. But that's all we've got for the high-level monsters. Now, the deck really, really shines with your low-level stuff, starting out with this card right here, probably the best of the new cards, Chaos Summoning Beast. What this card does is it basically allows you to, um, when it's uh, normal or special summon on the field, doesn't matter what, you can tribute this card and special summon any Sacred Beast monster you want from your hand to the field, and that ignores its summoning conditions, which is absolutely awesome, guys, because you will be getting this card out quite a lot. And then when it's in the graveyard, you can banish it to add their amazing field spell, Fallen Paradise, from your deck to your hand. More on that field spell later, but just know that uh, this card is a linchpin at your deck, and running it at any less than three is suicide. Next card we've got in here is three copies of Dark Beckoning Beast. Now, this was the first new card that was revealed for the Sacred Beast, and probably one of their best, because this one allows you to search any Sacred Beast card that lists any of their names in it from your deck to your hand, which means that almost your entire deck is searchable off of this card. In addition, you also will get a extra normal summon with this monster as well, um, which uh, extra normal summons of the zero, uh, zero attack power fiend monster is fantastic, doesn't matter if you normal or special summon this card, it can still get that second effect off. And that's perfect if you want to go for this guy, three copies of Dark Summoning Beast. And this guy was out for a while ago uh, with Sacred Beast um, and was one of the only two pieces of new support that they got, uh, the first two pieces of support that they got, I mean. And basically what he does 
is when he's on the board, you can tribute him, and in exchange for your battle phase of that turn, you can bring out a sacred beast monster from your deck, ignoring its summoning condition. Now, the point that I'm noting is that I've got some cards in here that were run by Kagamaru, but a lot of these, you know, particularly Dark Summoning Beasts, were run by Marcel and later Ubel. So, really, really great card. Uh, you can also use this effect um, to tribute over your uh, Dark Summoning Beast and get even more uh, attack power out. So, we'll move that over there. Next uh, and final monsters we've got in here are three copies of Chaos Core, a Marcel Bonaparte original. This card is targeted for an attacker by card effect. He can mill Hamon, Raviel, and Uriah from your deck to the graveyard and give this card counters, and you can basically protect this card and your life points with those counters. Um, and this happens anytime this card is targeted. So I've got, uh, you know, a couple of cutesy little things in here that I can use to kind of get those effects off. But uh, that's going to do it for the monsters for now, and we're moving on to the spells. Now, as I mentioned, guys, uh, this deck is super, super easy to build thanks to the brand new starter decks or structure decks that are out for the Sacred Beast. And uh, I definitely encourage you guys to build it. It's so, so fun being able to play with a lot of these old monsters. And one of the best cards in your entire deck is going to be this one, Opening of the Spirit Gates. Now, the reason I love the new support is because they really took the time to make it kind of GX-centric. And as you can notice here, guys, this represents the exact dual area where um, Jaden dueled Kagemaru at the end of Season 1, uh, the villain Climax duel. Um, and basically they have the seven spirit gates here, which had to be opened by the seven duels of the Shadow Riders in order to generate enough dual energy to get them out. But uh, this card is absolutely fantastic because it allows you to fetch Uriah, Hamon, or Raviel from your deck to your hand if it's activated, or you can fetch one monster that l specifically lists any of those cards from your deck to your hand. And the reason that's really good is because every single one of the monsters in this deck is either one of those cards or it lists one of those cards in its card text, which means this card can search your entire deck of monsters. In addition to that, um, basically you can discard a card and then special summon a fiend type monster, which means that if you already have a fiend type monster in your graveyard, you can discard something like your dark beckoning beast or your dark summoning beast and special summon any fiend type, including dark summoning beast itself from your graveyard and get an extra tribute to put a sacred beast right on board. So it's so, so good and definitely uh, one of the best cards that you can play in this deck. And then its last effect is actually really, really amazing, and I'm trying to figure out a way to, you know, get some more searchable continuous spell cards in here, because once per turn, when you control a level 10 monster, not just any of those guys, you can fetch from your graveyard back to your hand a continuous spell card, and that is a free effect. We then have three copies of Dimension Fusion Destruction. This is the card that you use to get out any of your Armatile-like uh, monsters, and Dimension Fusion Destruction is super good because it, like when Armatile was released, it had a lot of effects, and we've gotten some cards after that. I don't yet have the uh, extra fusion monster that just came out for the deck. I haven't been able to get it due to the uh, coronavirus and, uh, you know, staying socially distanced and whatnot, so I haven't been able to go out to the store to purchase the card, but basically Dimension Fusion Destruction is a it's, it just basically covers all the weaknesses that uh, Armatile had, because Armatile's only effect was to have it gain 10,000 attack during your turn only. So by using Dimension Fusion Destruction, you special summon Armatile, and it doesn't have any battle damage um, that you can take with it, which is fa fantastic. Um, and your opponent cannot activate cards or effects in response to this card's activation, which means no matter what, you're getting an Armatile off. You combine Armatile's Battle Protection with that card, and you've got a really, really good option there. Next card we've got is uh, two copies of Cerulean Skyfire. Uh, bumped it down from three, but basically this card is great because you use it in con uh, in uh, concert with Hamon. To uh, When Hamon's in attack mode, you can switch Hamon to defense mode to negate the effect of a... Uh, continuous spell or trap card that your opponent controls, or any spell or trap card that your opponent controls. And it's actually really good because this is one of the only cards in the game that can negate Super Poly, because Super Poly cannot have its activation be negated. However, if you're just negating the card's effect, Super Poly can activate and can then be negated by Cerulean Skyfire, which is really, really cool. And I'm glad that they gave this card this kind of effect. 
Uh, also, as they are continuous spells, they can be used. Um, you can use this card to set, like Dimension Fusion Destructions, and use them to special summon uh, Hamon as well, which is really, really cool that they kind of allowed that. Uh, kind of a throwback to Kagemaru, if you will. Next card is probably the best card in this deck, guys. It's two copies of Fallen Paradise. Also cut down from three because uh, it's so searchable and so easy to get. When you control a Sacred Beast monster, draw two cards. No questions asked. It's literally a pot of greed every single turn. So uh, that includes if you have any of the Sacred Beasts or Armatile on board, you get that effect. And then it also gives them blanket protection. Monster, uh, so from target or destruction uh, by battle or by uh, card effects. So let's say if you have that guy plus Armatile out, uh, Armatile becomes pretty much invincible because it cannot be destroyed by battle by its own effect. Uh, gets the battle damage protection from Dimension Fusion Destruction, will gain 10,000 during your turn and cannot be destroyed by, uh, targeted or destroyed by card effects while you have Fallen Paradise out. So uh, it actually makes Armatile quite a threat to deal with and well worth summoning if you have the opportunity to do so. Uh, now, a uh, little bit of a flavor card as well, a Kagemaru Special, Phantasmal Martyrs. Um, don't really need to say too much about this card besides the fact that a lot of people have really been you know dogging on this card and nobody really likes to run it but i actually love this card because it's a great way to generate your tokens and once you generate your tokens uh you can summon the monster but it discards your entire hand so the idea is that what you do is if you have a um if you have a uh a dark summoning beast in your hand you activate this effect while you control another sacred beast that's not Raviel, discard your entire clan hand, including the dark summoning beast, special the three tokens, then banish summoning beast to grab a Raviel from your deck to your hand and special Raviel to the board. And the best part about this is that through other cards that can allow you to special summon sacred beast back, you can do that with Raviel and um, special summon your Raviel back to uh to the field even if uh you would ignore summoning conditions otherwise now um next spell cards we have in here are two copies of pot of acquisitiveness to keep the sacred beast numbers at three you're going to be banishing them a lot with your fusion spells they're going to be going to the grave they're going to be like a lot of stuff is going to happen to your sacred beast guys Let, let's be real here so you need to have a way to get them back into your deck pot of acquisitiveness is the perfect way to do that cycle them all back into your deck draw a card and then be able to keep uh, keep pushing your plays forward. So um, this is one of the cards that allows us to keep the Sacred Beast number at three. And speaking of interesting cards, uh, another flavor card in here is Sword of Dark Rites. Now, this is an equip card that basically says that when the equip monster is tributed and uh, this card is sent to the graveyard, you basically return this card to your hand. But the important thing is the fact that it's an equip card, you can use it to target your Chaos Core and trigger Chaos Core's effect. Then, if Chaos Core is tributed for the tri uh, for the summon of like a Raviel or something like that, you can bounce your Sword of Dark Rites to your hand to use it again. So, really, really cool card, and I think its interaction works great in this deck. Um, and, you know, I'd definitely be open to hearing of any other equip cards you guys might be interested in seeing in here, but for now, I'm really enjoying Sword of Dark Rites. Last three cards we've got, Monster Reborn, Raigeki, and Foolish Burial to close things out. That's it for these spells. Moving on to the traps. Traps are kind of self-explanatory as well, but I think I should go over them just in case. Uh, we've got the three copies starting out with uh, Awakening of the Sacred Beasts. Now, this is the other really, really great trap card, and I wish these guys had also gotten a hollow foil printing as well. And, you know, I think common is not a, not a good enough printing for them by any stretch of the imagination. But basically, if you control any number of sacred beasts, you get specific effects. So if you control one sacred beast, each time your opponent normal or special summons a monster, you gain life points equal to the attack of that. So it's like if you discard um, your uh, ghost sister card from your, deck, uh, from your hand to the graveyard and you gain attack equal to the special summon. Two, you can negate the activated effects of monsters that your opponent controls, which is absolutely amazing. So it's a one-sided skill drain. And finally, with three, which is very, very rare, any monsters sent to your opponent's graveyard are banished instead. And then this also has a similar effect to your awakening of the seven spirit gates in that it, um, the opening of the seven spirit gates and that allows you, while you control a level 10 monster, to add once per turn a continuous trap card from your graveyard back to your hand for no cost whatsoever. Next card in here at three, uh, I've been 
waffling on the number of this as well. Three copies of Hyper Blaze. This basically makes your Uriah really, really good. I want to get more trap cards into this deck because I feel that, like, while, like, just the way that Uriah is designed, it's designed to be used in its own deck. You can make a really, really great dedicated Uriah deck that gets it up to 45,000 attack power, but it just doesn't have enough attack usually. But this card basically helps by um, giving attack power to your, uh, to your Uriah, allowing you to use normal traps in your grade in addition, which I don't really have any of them in this deck, um, and then also allows you to get some different effects off uh, by milling more and more trap cards to your graveyard and uh, reviving your Uriah if it is ever sent to the graveyard. But do note, while this card has a revival effect similar to the one that Uriah had, you cannot activate that effect unless Uriah was summoned properly, aka by tributing three face-up continuous trap cards. However, if you were to add normal traps in, Hyperblaze also has the effect that allows you to use those face-down normal traps, as Kagemaru did to make your summon of your Uriah. Final card in here is Call of the Haunted because you contribute it, bring back Dark Summoning Beast or any other thing that tributes itself, and then the Call of the Haunted just sticks on the, uh, on the field where you can then use it for tribute fodder for Uriah. Moving on to the extra deck, as I mentioned before, guys, I'm missing that brand new uh, card, but I do have the one copy in here of your Armatile the Chaos Phantom. Uh, very, very good card. Gains 10,000 during your turn. Cannot be destroyed by battle. Combine it together with your, the rest of your cards to get some really, really awesome effects. And then finally, the two copies of Phantasm Emperor Trilogig, which is uh, not really as good, but um, definitely an interesting card, and you can also summon it off of your... Um, of your Dimension Fusion Destruction, which is really, really nice. So there comes a time where you might want the option to do so, and uh, this gives it to you. But guys, that's going to do it for my Kagemaru slash Marcel Bonaparte slash Yubel Sacred Beast character deck profile. If you liked the video, please remember to rate, comment, subscribe to the Team Time Riders YouTube channel for more awesome videos just like this. This has been the Merman Master, and I'm signing out. Catch you guys next time. Peace.